Tom Moreno, I'm chairman of the Public Works Committee. We're having a special meeting this evening, uh, Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. We're in the first floor conference room at City Hall. Uh, with that, I'll call the meeting to order. Item two is to review the West Side lift station change order, request, and take action. Joel, what do you want us to start? Sure, so I've got a packet of information, um, and, and it has all of the the proposals and emails that went along with those proposals, but I thought I'd go through these items one at a time and just uh, talk about them real briefly. So these all have to do with the West Side Lift Station project, and uh, we're getting close to being done with the project, but there's a few change orders that we need to address. Uh, the first one is we're able to remove an electrical uh, antenna or a, a wireless antenna conduit and cable from the contract, that's a $491 credit, um, and staff recommends approving that. The next one is to install emergency lighting that wasn't included in the plan, which is something uh, that wasn't initially identified as a requirement for this type of facility, but the fire inspector um, felt that they belong, so we're going to add them. Um, it's $1,159.13 to do that. Staff recommends approving that. Uh, the next item is some fencing that was uh, that we can remove from the contract and install in coordination with the zoo master plan project at a cheaper price. So that's a savings of five thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars. So we recommend approving a change order to remove that from the contract. The next item is a little bit interesting. So we hadn't really planned on continuing to use the old lift station but as the as the project was led and there was some other discussions that there was uh, some desire to evaluate its usefulness for the future and so at this time the sign shop staff is still working out of that facility and uh, since it was the wastewater plant there's no sanitary sewer service to anywhere but itself. It's no longer a lift station and so the sanitary sewer that's generated internally needs to go somewhere else. Um, the roof drains also drain into that and so it's not something that we can just uh, suck out on an occasional basis so we requested a proposal to uh, install that service lateral from the existing lift station to the new lift station and that was going to be about $13,000. Uh, since then, we've evaluated what we can do for shorter term options. So we're going to install a grinder pump, hang that in the, in the old wet well, and use some temporary piping to plumb it um, in the interim until a final decision is made on what the useful life of that building really is going to be. And at that point, we can decide if we want to do something more permanent. So, Staff's recommending to deny that change order and not perform that service. Uh, the next item is to remove the screen from the old lift station and deliver it to the city. The contract had called for that to, to be part of the equipment removed by the contractor, but we were looking at the lift station at, uh, at two mile in, in uh, second or two mile first there, and um, that one plugs up with rags all the time, the pumps get plugged and the guys are forever cleaning those out. And so Ryan felt that this old screen still has some useful life in it. So instead of the contractor scrapping it, and that's basically the, the cost, the $1,900 is what they were gonna receive in scrap value. We'd like to keep that and then we'll repurpose it at the other lift station. Uh, so that's a $1,908.90 change order that we're recommending approval for. And then the last item is the, the primary item, and that's uh, installing wet well gate operators that operate outside of the wet well. And that is $16,954.21. Um, the, the staff has identified that the uh, the wet well gates would require staff to enter a confined space to operate them in the event that they need to be operated. 
um, having external gate operators with gearboxes at grade, number one, improves functionality, it's a lot faster, and number two, it infinitely improves the safety for the staff. Um, it gives you the, uh, the ability for operators to isolate each wet well chamber without entering the confined space. And so we recommend approval of that item. Then I've also passed out a few other items that are allowances that were included in the contract. There's a couple more allowances that aren't finalized yet, but we have an allowance for rock excavation for structures that we didn't uh, completely fulfill, so there's a $2,354.28 deduct there. An allowance for rock removal for utility trenches. We didn't use any of that. That's $2,625. An allowance for unsuitable soil structures of $3,125. And an allowance for unsuitable soils and utility trenches for $3,675. So that's a deduct of $11,000. $779.28. So in summary, if, uh, if the committee makes a motion to approve the staff recommendations regarding these change orders and uh, contract adjustments, the net change is $1,826.96 additional to the contract price of, you know, it's a $2 million contract, so it's pretty negligible, but I, I, I think we can easily justify these uh, changes. $1,826.96. dollars 96 There's a few other um, allowances that aren't finalized, so at the end of the day, it'll probably be less than that yet. I'm, I'm predicting there'll be some more allowance, some more unused allowance, but this is what we have for today, and we do need to make a decision on the operator, um, really today is, is ideal, so that we can let the contractor know and then they can continue work out there. Is this in the original or in the plans, Joel? That, what, that, that operator? operator? No. So it's something that we had talked about. Maybe it was that wastewater or something. Yes. Yeah, so, so we talked about it, and we did talk about it at the wastewater commission meeting. Um, it was talked about initially. Strand did not include it in the project because in their preliminary design, there was some conflict between some of the pumping equipment and these gate operators. But in the process of making some revisions to the design when the plant was relocated to try to keep it out of the rock, those conflicts went away. And um, it wasn't realized at that point in time that the conflicts went away and we could install the operators. And so what this amounts to is uh, some I-beams for support of the operator assemblies. There's a uh, a rotating gearbox outside with a threaded type operator so person turns the wheel essentially from outside of the facility and a threaded type operator pulls the gate up and then these and going up isn't an issue it's when it has to push the gate back down that's where the extra reinforcing inside comes into play to keep those operators in columns so they don't bend like a piece of spaghetti um, so long story short is this cost um, really isn't excessive. It, I don't think there there'd be any difference if we'd have had included it in the project versus now. There's not a lot of there's not really any extra work that the contractor needs to accommodate this. They just need to do this installation. So I think it, the, the it's a good value also. Well, Safety-wise, that's sure uh, good. Uh, down in there. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I, I mean the cost, whatever, 
confined space uh, situations um, are getting more and more stringent. Um, and I, as far as our own employees, you know, um, looking out for them. So I don't have a problem with that or any of the other change orders except for the, the sewer lateral, the, the one that's being denied. And the reason why I'm inquiring about that is because there's an email on here in our packet, page 18 on my PDF, and it's from Ryan Giefer to Jack Swicker. And it says, hi, Paul and Jack. I was just informed today that the mayor potentially wants to immediately repurpose the existing West Side List Station building. I do not think we've got plans to run a new sewer lateral from the existing building to the new interceptor. Since plumbing code would dictate it must have sewer hooked up to be used, I'm wondering if AWS August Winters could provide uh, costs to perform a hookup like this. Let me know your thoughts. Yep. And then further after that, then that obviously that's August Winters' price quote. Yep. But my question is, and obviously the mayor isn't here tonight, but what is he going to repurpose this building for? So there's some thought that it could be repurposed for some type of zoo type of activity because it's right there at the zoo. And obviously, again, you know, you're know, you not the mayor, but that's where my question is, is you don't know anything about that. Um, and does, I wonder if property and finance knows anything about a desire to, because personnel, we discussed in the past that the mayor has um, the purview of that, but buildings and grounds, that's, the council. So um, I find it really uniquely odd that the mayor is asking someone, or Ryan for that matter, to get a price quote for this. You know, on the other hand, the second thing that Ryan said in here is plumbing code uh, the, the suggests that the building can't be used if the sewer is not hooked up. Right. So then, is that a case where we do need to hook up sewer? Is that a case where, and I, I think that there was some about a grinder pump mentioned, um, but is this a case while contractors on site, it would be less expensive for mobilization costs to have them do it now? I don't believe so. I, I think the, the price that we have from August winters, um, when the staff evaluated that cost, we, we didn't feel that that's a, a good value there. Um, and then the other reason was that that, that we're recommending to deny it is that we, we don't know if that building's going to be reused because it does need to go before council. Um, you know, when we first started the final design work for the project, you know, as staff, we had made an assumption that the, the building will go away. It's an old building. Um, our preference with the sign shop work that's taking place at that facility is to bring it over to the city garage campus and those activities then can be better monitored, staff can be uh, better utilized for other activities that it's, you know, we were using that facility because it was available. Um, well, it's still available. The, uh, the, the concerns that the staff has is the, uh, the current ma maintenance condition of the building, that there is some water issues with the building. There's some, you know, it was recently, the interior was recently repainted. There's some, there's some problems with that. And it's not an efficient building to heat and cool. It's one thing to heat it when, in the winter months, when all of that wastewater equipment's running inside generating heat. Um, it's a little different story when all that equipment's removed and gone. So, you know, it's, it, so it, it does need to be evaluated what the city wants to do with that building. Um, that said, in order for our staff to keep working there, and they have to keep working there for now because we don't have a place for them yet, we need to have uh, sanitary sewer service. And so on an interim basis, this will suffice. Uh, the, the grinder pump system is, is gonna keep that wet well dry. 
the roof drains drop into the wet well. The, those pumps we already have. We were using them. Uh, the one pump will be more than enough. We were using it last year or two years ago on our first street project. Um, we'll be able to hang that pump, hang a float, use it for six months a year in that capacity. And when we decide what we're going to do with the building, at that point in time, we can either remove it or install a more permanent solution. Because if we're going to use the building, there's going to be a lot more work that's going to need to be done to it. Uh, change in use is going to require it to be brought up to current ADA standards, things like that for its uh, proposed use. And what's it going to be used for? So all those things would need to be evaluated and, and given that high price tag, you know, if it was going to be a thousand or two thousand dollars, we would recommend let's take care of it and, and get it done. But given that price tag, staff's not comfortable um, investing that kind of money in a building that we're not sure is even going to be standing in a year. So that's kind of the backstory on that recommendation. But yeah, it is the council's got to decide what that facility is going to be used for or if it's going to be removed. You know, in the Zoom Master Plan, it's gone. It, it, that's a parking lot. Um, and if you go and take a look at the building, it's a, you know, architecturally, it's kind of a neat looking building. Does it make sense to refurbish it? At this point, we haven't done that type of investigation. We don't know exactly what any future intended use might be. So I'd like to take a tour of it. Have you ever been in there? I think I was in there when I was a long time ago, yeah. Be glad to do that because I'd like to take you um, in the upcoming months down to the new lift station and show you that facility sure. as well. So we can definitely accommodate that. Take a tour of the building. You can see the sign shop operations that are taking place there as well as you know some of the interesting character of the building and, uh, and all of its flaws. Well, you know, and, and that's it. I mean, we're evaluating it, but that I think that that's one thing that so many times, regardless if it's public or private sector, um, you see a piece of infrastructure, and because it's 40, 50, 80 years old, um, it's not valuable anymore. But, you know, when you look at, and granted, our country's only been around for, what, 240 years, but it's a case where you look in Europe, and there's buildings that are 500, 600, 800,000 right. years old. Yes. And the, the, in terms of repurposing it, sure, if it was open to the public or whatever, but if it's a case where we've got all these projects going on and different things that we can really focus on, sometimes the easiest thing is to let the sign shop remain there until we ultimately figure out yep. what's going on. You know, but as far as if, if it's, in, and that's why I'm asking the question because the second half of Ryan's email was the plumbing standards. So then, um, re, I guess, re-asking that because I I think that we, we got a lot of information from what you just mentioned, Joe. Does a grinder pump, this is what my fear would be, somehow down the road, six months to a year, it was found that now we're not in compliance of the state code or something else by using this grinder pump mechanism and now we have to immediately shut down and or tear down and now we're in a, a situation where everybody's running around um, with their like their chicken with their head cut off and we got to do this and we got to do this and we got to do this so the question is how long in theory, if we wanted to continue this building or continue the sign shop operation or whatever at that location, how long can we have a grinder pump operation? A grinder pump could be left indefinitely. The, the question is, can a temporary hose be left or does it need to be plumbed underground? And, you know, again, I, I think that this meets the spirit of the rules that there's no sanitation issues I, I would say we'd have a year and that within a year we need to know what we're doing to either make that a permanent installation or remove it 
Yeah, um, and then a second question, I guess, follow up on this. If we did it under the guise of this safe um, or clean drinking water loan program, do would we get principal forgiveness for that particular project? No, the principal forgiveness portion is is just on the um, the new river crossing and uh, new lift station. And, and we've already exceeded that amount anyway, so this 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 component wouldn't matter. So even that like sixteen thousand for the project with the, the gates or whatever that won't qualify either. It so the project already more than qualifies. I think it's about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of principal forgiveness, and the project's a what, three and a half million dollar project. So um, changes now are inconsequential to whether the city will receive that. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, because I mean, as far as I'm, like I said, with any of the other change orders, whatever, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. fine with. But with this, I, I, I don't know why I got a fear, but I, I just got a fear. Um, if there's, like I said, if there, if there was a real, <clears throat> real problem with the sanitation, we could put a porta potty outside for a short time. I mean, there's. It, it, there's no, not there's it, not an issue with the I, I, yeah I'm not too worried about the the workers or the right. staff or whatever but in terms of I don't know I uh, let's just say that um, unfortunately the mayor isn't here to ask the, answer the question on what he really uh, I, I mean you could say it's doing stuff but again he he should know that that he isn't in charge of buildings and, and grounds. Period. You know that's the council. So it'd be whether it's this committee or whether it be finance and, and property. So even for him to uh, instruct a staff member to get a price quote, I think that that's inappropriate. Um, but uh, neither here nor there. Um, is this a case where that I think I, did I ask this question on um, August winners is quote. Is that something where it is? It does include, or it would be kind of like a standalone project. So if they had left and then came back, that's about ballpark what it would be. Yeah, I don't think it'd be that much. I, I don't know that they really want to do that work. Oh, I, what I, I'm sorry. In your expert opinion, would it be about that much, or it? it was it lapped over the fact that the contract was mobilized, or if it was put out for bid, and understanding that we don't need to put it, put it yep. out for bid for that low of a project, but if it was put out for bid, would a probably the lowest bid be approximately about that much? Yeah, sure. Ballpark. Ballpark. Yep. Yep. I think it'd be a little less, but ballpark, yes. Well, I in that twenty like dollar range. Here, yes. that would be a little bit less, and I got my fingers crossed that anything would be a little bit less. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you know, I think twelve thousand dollars, given the given the uh, accessibility of the wet well and the proximity of the of the influent manhole right outside the wall. It's, it's basically core a hole through the wall, a shallow trench, and a drop wouldn't be a big project at all. I don't think. It's something we could do in house too, for that matter. Really? Yeah. Well then that's what we should definitely look at because I mean if we can do it in house for comp time, um, whatever, you know. I mean the only thing we might not be able to do in house is the internal piping. That that likely needs to be a certified plumber, but the connection of the manhole outside we, we can do any of that in house with our staff and equipment. And again, I, I think we want to wait until we know what the long term plan of that building is going to be before we really invest any more in what we than what we have to in it. Well, I yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I don't I don't disagree with that at all, Joe. I don't. So with that being said. Uh, and you sounded favorable for that in the spring or when when this um, project turns over. Yep. That'd be wonderful if we could take a tour of yes, a, a committee or inviting uh, extra council well, members yeah, or whoever. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. 
So I guess with that being said, I'll make a motion to accept what was presented for the, the change orders and with staff recommendations behind them. I think that's all. Do we want anything further? I should take care of anything. Detox. And the deduct, does that, do we need to put that in a motion? No or no? We need the deducts in there, Joe, in the motion, probably, or no? Um, it certainly doesn't hurt. It, to approve change orders and deducts is, is recommended by staff and presented. Okay, that's your motion, I'll second that. Discussion, and, and further, building operations we're going to be talking about that we're going to be deciding okay what, yep what included in the motion yeah okay. yeah put that in the motion public yep. works or finance and property are going to be deciding what happens with buildings And further building decisions to be determined by city council. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. If there's no further discussion, committee, we can vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Uh, with that, we're to item three, and that's adjourned. I'll move we adjourn. Uh, second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Returned at 5.28. Thank you.